Just a quick note before I get started. When I started this YouTube channel, I decided that due to my appreciation for anyone who commented to one of my videos, I would answer every comment just basically to say thanks. Up until now, I have stayed true to that goal. Well, thanks to all of you who have continued to watch my videos, the channel has grown substantially to the point that answering every comment has become very time consuming. That task has started to take away from the time I need to spend researching, writing, and producing new videos. So I have reluctantly decided that I won't be able to answer every comment. I will continue to answer some. That doesn't mean I don't appreciate the comments anymore. Quite the contrary. I sincerely appreciate every single one of them. Please continue to comment and know that I am deeply honored and blessed that you have decided to use some of your precious time to view a video. Now on to the Buffalo Soldiers. Buffalo Soldiers was a name given to two cavalry and three infantry regiments of African-American Army units. They were originally formed in 1866 at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas as the 10th Cavalry Regiment and would eventually include the 9th Cavalry Regiment and also the 24th, 25th, and 2nd, 38th Infantry Regiments. The Buffalo Soldiers were established by Congress as the first peacetime all-black regiments in the U.S. Army. In the first 11 years of their existence, the Buffalo Soldiers were exclusively commanded by white commissioned officers and black non-commissioned officers. The first black commissioned officer to lead the Buffalo Soldiers was the first black graduate of West Point, Henry O. Flipper. His command began in 1877. There is disagreement among historians as to how they got their nickname Buffalo Soldiers. The Buffalo Soldier National Museum credits the Cheyenne Indians with the actual translation being Wild Buffalo. Writer Walter Hill credits the Comanche with originating the name, saying that the soldiers had curly hair like buffalo. That claim is supported by other sources. Another theory is that the Plains Indians called them that because of the bison coats they wore in the winter. However the name originated, it stuck and became accepted terminology for African American Army units, a generic term so to speak. There are many stories of brave and meritorious service performed by Buffalo Soldiers. In 1867, Private John Randall of Troop G of the 10th Cavalry Regiment was assigned to accompany two civilians on a hunting trip. The soldier and civilians were attacked by approximately 70 Cheyenne warriors. The civilians were killed and Private Randall's horse was shot out from under him. He managed to scramble to a defensive position and held off the Indians with a revolver and 17 bullets. Hearing the shots, troops camped nearby rode to his defense and the Indian combatants beat a hasty retreat leaving 13 fallen warriors behind. Private Randall suffered a gunshot wound to his shoulder and 11 lance wounds but recovered. The Cheyenne were so impressed by their lone adversary they spread the word of this new type soldier. Quote, he fought like a cornered buffalo, who like a buffalo had suffered wound after wound, yet had not died, and who like a buffalo had a thick and shaggy mane of hair. End quote. From their formation in 1866 to the early 1890s, the Buffalo Soldiers were significant contributors to U.S. Army duties in the Southwest and Plains regions. They performed duties such as building roads and escorting mail, but were also involved 
in many military campaigns against Indians during that era. From 1880 into 1881, they participated in what is known as Victorio's War, so named because it involved the pursuit of Apache Chief Victorio, one of the last holdouts of the Apache Nation. The 9th Cavalry was deployed on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota in the winter of 1890 to 1891 during the events of the Ghost Dance War and Wounded Knee Massacre. There were a total of 18 Buffalo Soldiers who received the Medal of Honor during the Indian Wars. The 9th Cavalry participated in the famous Johnson County War in Wyoming, a land war between small farmers and wealthy ranchers. The wealthy ranchers put together a group of hired killers to oppose the farmers. The 9th spent a year in Wyoming helping quell tensions in the area. A famous event in the Buffalo Soldier history is called the Buffalo Soldier Tragedy of 1877 or the Staked Plains Horror. It occurred in the summer of 1877 when a group of Buffalo Soldiers went on a mission to return about 170 Comanche Indians back to a reservation they had left. While off the reservation, the Indians had attacked a group of buffalo hunters in the Staked Plains, a vast region in western Texas and eastern New Mexico known for its dry, desolate terrain. The civilian hunters teamed up with a group of 63 buffalo soldiers led by a white commander, Captain Merritt Nolan, with the goal of returning the Indians to the reservation and recovering the stolen livestock. The ill-fated mission was troubled by the fact that the civilian hunters distrusted the army leadership and the feeling was mutual from Captain Nolan's standpoint. The goals of the two parties were different. The civilian's main goal was the recovery of their stolen livestock and the main goal of the army contingent was the return of the Comanches to the reservation. The result was that the men became lost and separated. It was particularly hot and dry during that time, and the men wandered in the hostile environment for five days with virtually no water. The cost was high for the participants. Four soldiers and one civilian perished in the ordeal, in addition to 30 horses and six mules. Four soldiers were court-martialed and convicted for desertion. Captain Nolan's official report of the incident varies from the civilian accounts, and as is the case with many events of the era, historians are left with some answers but many unanswered questions as well. In the period from 1898 to 1918, the Buffalo Soldiers continued their service in the Spanish-American War to include the Battle of San Juan Hill in Cuba, where five more Medals of Honor were earned. They participated in the Philippine-American War from 1899 to 1903. The Buffalo Soldiers continued to serve as all-black units until 1948. In 1948, President Harry Truman signed Executive Order 9981, which desegregated the military. During the Korean War, black and white troops operated in integrated units for the first time. The 24th Infantry Regiment saw combat during the Korean War and was the last segregated regiment to engage in combat. On December 12, 1951, the last Buffalo Soldier units, the 27th and 28th Cavalry, were disbanded. Monuments to the Buffalo Soldiers are at Fort Leavenworth in Kansas 
in Junction City, Kansas, near Fort Riley. The Buffalo Soldiers served honorably and with distinction during their tenure in the U.S. Armed Forces. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, make a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.